Welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. With a lovely new do. I have my do ready for pork yeah. fest. I am, speaking of hair, because, you know, we talk about stupid things that nobody cares about, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so I actually had a, a haircut scheduled for tomorrow, and then, uh, yesterday I was like, oh, I can't do that. Like, what, what, the, what? But it was funny. That's why I, I never book out, I because know. I, I really thought I would need a haircut before going camping. Apparently not. So now I have to wait two weeks, you know, whatever. Uh -oh. So uh, we are in our lovely summer colors because we are going on our summer festival yes. trip next week. We are week. camping so all next will... week. We will not be taping. Uh -huh. which I mean, we will be with. taping all kinds of things, but not, but not this show. <laughs> um, yeah. It's um, going to be, I'm looking forward to just a week of not oh of my doing goodness. away. I am uh, like up to yeah. here in spreadsheets now. Yeah. All the media requests are yeah. coming in. For anyone who is watching this and sees it before next week, uh, if you are interested in coming, we do still have tickets available. There are $75. Yeah. It's, this uh, is for Pork, Pork Fest, Fest in Lancaster, New Hampshire. So it's the Porcupine Freedom Festival, yep. 20th year. Yep. Which, yep. you know, sometimes we don't stop and really fully, I think, appreciate things and you know when it really like hit me as i was watching top chef yeah and that's my favorite like thing switch off show mm -hmm. uh and it was a really good season yeah. because they had the chefs from all over the world okay. so they had winners from different mm -hmm. countries competing so it was like already like they'd been vetted yeah. and at the end when they announced the winner, Padma, do you know who she no. is? Okay, so a <coughs> tall, beautiful uh, Indian woman. She was a model, yeah. and then she did the show and everything. And they just did a little toast right at the end, and she goes, 20 seasons. I can't like, believe what? we've done this for 20 right. seasons. Right. And I was like, we've done Board yeah. Fest for 20 yeah. seasons. So it'll be good. So. It'll be nice to be away. Um, fingers crossed that the weather is as erratic as it has been this week. You can't tell what you're going to do. The other day it was supposed to be raining. I opened the kitchen door, and it's like 80 and humid. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm confused. So who knows? Anyways. It's, uh, it's going to be great. And the reason I mentioned the tickets is because, I mean, for 75 bucks yeah. for an entire week is ridiculously cheap. Yep. But it's also actually and that's not just the, expensive. That's just the festival. That's not a, that doesn't cover camping. No. So but, pretty much at this point, it's probably day Well, I mean, so, so it boils down to a day pass, yeah. I would say, at this stage. But also, you know, we have... Uh, RFK, Robert Kennedy Jr. will be speaking. Tulsi uh, yep. Gabbard yep. will be speaking. There's Dennis a... Kucinich is coming. Uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, Aaron Day, who used to serve on our board, mm -hmm. who's running for president. I was like, well, more power to you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, and none of these people are doing campaign work. No, they're just so talking. They, they're coming and they're doing like interesting talks. Yeah. Like Vivek has, is talking on the deep yep. state. Yep, yep. And, uh, Aaron's talking on CBDCs yep. and, you know, like digital yep. currencies. And It'll stuff. be interesting. So It'll be good. Very, very topical. But anyways, you can go to, um, you could Google Porkfest. I think it's just porkfest.com, isn't it? Yep. Porkfest.com, P-O-R-C with a C, not pork like the meat, um, fest.com. And you can buy tickets there and it's a beautiful part of the state. Um, we'll fill you in when we get back about the exciting things that happen. Um, Brought absolutely no notes. I'm totally convinced that we can go through a show with no notes. Um, can we? We totally can. <laughs> so one, before we start, I noticed they're up to they're doing something outside. So I, as I'm walking in, I'm like, yeah. what are they doing now? So I saw Kevin Kavanaugh and I saw media, but I also saw somebody from the Parks Department. So that made little to no sense on Elm Street to me. I, I, so I, I noticed it'll be interesting to see what. There that was is. like a huddle, maybe 14 um, people. I recognize Carol Rubido yeah, from Manchester, from Manchester Inkley. Inkley. That's what made me go, okay, she, she's something. She was talking to, so I mean, they were all standing next to a dustbin, so I can't lie. I was like, oh, we cut a, a ribbon for another Well, that's trash. what I wondered, but then the person <laughs> from the parks department was there, so I was like, well, I don't know. So I had an interesting little uh, conversation yesterday with, um, when when I walk on the west side of mm. uh, the Piscataway River Rail yes. Trail. Um, sometimes I park at the end of the, one of the dead end streets mm -hmm. there and I've been doing it for so long that I actually know the people yeah. who live in that house. Uh, their son's a trucker and, you know, we chit yeah. chat and they happened to be standing outside yesterday. So I was like, hi guys, you know, we started talking and, um, 
they were actually waiting because they were going to have their their pet put down oh. so we started talking about that and you know and it's just i mean it is a it's a compassionate thing yeah. to do but but the the uh, the older lady the mom who's probably you know in her 70s um was you know we were chatting and she's like do you know they're all and I was like, yes, yeah. I do know, because the guy was sleeping in his car mm. in their cul-de-sac uh, last time I was there. And it was, I mean, it was it was such a New Hampshire yep. thing, because I wear a, a, a like a Sleep. fanny yeah. pack with a, with a, a gun in and a yeah. pepper spray yeah. and my chewing gum and my cell phone and whatever, right? And she's like... So how she bro- broached it was she was like, hey, when you walk in the woods, do you have like pepper spray or something with you? And I was like, lady, not only do I have pepper spray, <laughs> I have a gun. Yeah. And, you know, and it's old school New yeah. Hampshire. She was like, oh, she's like, is Riley still open? You know, yeah. so that's her yeah. letting yeah. me know, hey, I've heard of a gun yeah. before. I'm not going to have hysterics and faint just because there is an inanimate object in my, you know, yeah. uh, purvey. Yeah. Um, but, you know, she's just as upset yeah, as... Yeah, Dan you know. just relayed the same type of story. Dan went and got his hair cut just before I left the house. And he was saying how the barber guy, come to find out, lives right down, right around the corner from us on one of the streets going down to the Piscataqua River Park, which reminded me to come back to. Um, and he was saying the same thing. What the heck? He's, the, the, people are just tired and very concerned about the homeless because... It just seems to be everywhere. And um, he was pointing out there was a fire down at the end of Head Street. It was on McClintock the other day um, on one of these properties that is actually on the river. And who knows what it is. But I mean, the house is pretty much destroyed. But he pointed out to the fire chief, he said, that there was a gas can across the street from his house in the shrubbery that wasn't there the day before. Oh, wow. So the fire department guy went over there, and there was a, a gas can with some gas still left in it and a couple cans of unopened tuna fish. So it's like, wait, mm-hmm. these are not things that normally just end up on the side of your street. So people are frustrated. Um, so then he went on, and Dan said, so you're not going to unsee this, and I was afraid to know what he was going to say. <laughs> so down the street from my house, which I can see from my house, um, one of the... Um, neighbors a few houses down has one of those little um like book libraries the little houses oh, yeah. that take, for one, the take a book one. leave a book and i do think i stopped and looked at it once and it was books it's now canned food oh. so this other neighbor is concerned because that's not actually helping because now people are gonna come up into our neighborhood to obtain the free food that you've now decided to display on your lawn for so it's like this torn between you know, compassion and actually solving the problem and and i think that's where we're at as a society right like and and, and we have to grapple with it yeah. because the thing is on the one hand you do want to give people the freedom to live their lives the way they choose. However, there's still co- constructs. There, there, there are still consequences to your choices. Yeah. And in a like in a in, in a highly functioning society, you would solve these problems with property rights, mm-hmm. right? Like n- the the street would actually be owned by someone, mm. right? Um, which sounds strange now, but you, everyone's comfortable with the streets are owned by everyone. So I don't know why like it sounds crazy yeah, yeah. to just be like maybe it's owned by someone else and you only pay for what you use as opposed to paying yeah. these premiums for, for no good reason. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to grapple with it because I saw they're extending the Beach Street yeah. property. So they're spending over a million, million dollars of funds that didn't that were set aside for to deal with this last year. So they're going to extend the Beach Street shelter, which is a very low barrier shelter, which basically just says you can come and go as you please. So so actually, and I didn't post this, but I wanted to, and I did underline the part, so I will remember. It was in Monday's Union Leader, and what the article said was they're going to keep the Beach Street thing mm-hmm. open, that there has been a reduction of call-outs, so the Beach Street program is not as strict as Mm -hmm. some of the other ones right Right. and so reading between the lines you're like oh so you're allowed to use there but you're not allowed to use openly (laughs) and then the next paragraph talked about well you know something has improved because we went from 37 ish uh, 
don't quote Overdose. me, to 17. So there was, uh, well, call outs by the fire department for the month of May. And I was like, okay, but that's still 17. (laughs) Let's just say 20 for the sake of argument. And is Uh, that call outs to the shelter? Yes. That's almost one a day. So so that actually struck me where I was like, wow, (laughs) okay, let's put some, let's, Let's put some numbers <laughs> yeah. on stuff like we like to do. So I was like, what does it cost the city every time? Because also we all know they don't just send the cheap car no, send or the, fire, the, 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 or, or the little truck because it's not like we have a Narcan truck. They decided, oh, every time there's a fire call, we have to send the big yep. truck so that Everyone knows we're doing stuff. Well, and I'm they like, say in case they have to go to a fire, but it's still, for those of us who aren't being call, calling out for drug overdoses, it costs us money. All of this costs money. And if they're going to, these are just, I mean, I see the threat bubble through Facebook on Queen City Alerts and all these alert pages. There's constant, I mean, not like once or twice a week. It's like every day, multiple times a day, uh, potent, either an overdose or somebody passed out outside of fit or at the shelter or like just all over the place all day long that's constant so i don't feel like we're what are we achieving so on top of extending the beach street shelter so they're going to spend over a million dollars they're going to extend it for a full another year they're more almost tripling the size that they have because it's like five thousand square feet now and they're going to go to fourteen thousand square feet um are they building on or they're just, just taking more of the building because it's okay. really like a loading dock it's not mm. really like a it's right. a warehouse yeah. but in the same week we hear that the ywca is closing the women's shelter up on i think brook street that houses like 16 so, or 20 women yeah, I think. and i've been seeing on joe lavasser's t- page the the outrage because so you've got women and they're the majority of our homeless people are men. So you've got women, and usually most women who are in shelters, I would presume, and this is completely a presumption, they're not in good places, right? So they're staying in a women's shelter for a reason. Well, I'm sort of going to assume anyone in a shelter is somewhere not in a good place. is, is, is not, you know, I mean? you know But if you're choosing to go to the woman's shelter as opposed to the regular shelter, it's... It's probably, I mean, usually those are situations of abuse right. where someone is so, fed, that kind of um, stuff. We're going to take those women, and I guess they're supposed to go to now the Beach Street shelter, which apparently, from the way people are discussing it, there are people who are on the sex offender list that also stay at the beach. So wait a minute. You want women. I mean, I know our society just doesn't care about women anymore because we let men pretend to be women oh, and do all these things. Can I? And we'll come. God, we're going to now make these women. We who are have, now non-men. Who Did have. No, that? don't even. Yes. So now those women <laughs> are going to have to go stay with the sex offenders. I'm not saying all these homeless people are sex offenders, but even if there's one sex offender living in there, that's an incredibly uncomfortable situation. So I do not see how opening this whatever day shelter thing is while we're allowing this other shelter to close, how is, and we're still getting constant calls for overdoses, is actually achieving the goal. And more and more people in the neighborhoods are just getting fed up. And I really- Well, because it's also, it's a trade-off, right? Like, yes, we want to be compassionate as a society, but if we're at the stage where the people who are paying the bills aren't safe on the streets- Well, there's a guy, I mean, uh, and and it's growing. So you always see people on Granite Street, on Queen City, you know, on the corners. As I'm coming across Granite Street Bridge today, I'm like, okay, that's not even like just a panhandler. This guy's sitting there. He's got his chair. He's got a couple styrofoam coolers with some sorts of signs on them. And he's got all his stuff. I mean, like a ton of stuff. And he's just hanging out on this median for the day. And I thought, yeah, I don't really think every the other 99% of the city has to deal with this when supposedly this Beach Street shelter... Even if you're not staying overnight, why aren't you there for the day? Why are you on a street corner? Well, panhandling actually pays really well. I haven't looked at the numbers in a long time, but back in probably 25 years ago now when I was in San Francisco, I actually have always been really interested in this issue because it's, 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 it's a hard nut to crack, right? Like you're, 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 uh, it's a problem with society because in the end it's the problem with the individual. 
individual yep, yep. because <coughs> that's the thing. We're not doing a call out to society. There's not a fire truck showing up because the homeless. There's some problem person, person right. who is owning in the shelter. And, you know, and my bleeding heart. But you know what? You, you, t- 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 yeah. You got to so, fix your crap. I wanted to get back to the <laughs> river park because I have a couple neat things. So um, last night we were down at the Piscataqua River Park on the um, the soccer field side, not on the ice arena side, because um, Connor Bishop, who's an Eagle Scout, unveiled. He built us awesome, a uh, trailhead. Oh, nice. And he mapped the trails. Sweet. So this, we now have an official, like, this is the entrance. You know, this is real. We're nice. a real park. So that was nice. Um, nice little turnout. Carol from Manchester Inklink was there. Um, it's just nice to see some progress, even if it's not huge, but it's like, it's the stepping stone to hopefully, <laughs> you know, years of improving the park. Well, I'll tell you, the homeless folks who are down on the side where I walk, well, uh, the one guy has his summer gazebo hammock up. Yeah. The other guy was complaining well, because the other guy stole his blankets. Well, I mean, there's this, like a whole right, little village right there, there. <laughs> near the near where the gate is, the, the truck gate. Now, keep in mind, there's trash cans not that far away, right? You got all day, walk to the trash can. Laying on the ground is an empty, tall iced tea or beer or whatever. It's always the and two water iced bottles tea. that are obviously filled with urine. Ew. Laying on the ground. So one of the guys can went and drag the, tra- the, the tr- can over. But I thought, you couldn't just go and put those in the trash? Mm. Like you're that lazy? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. It really is annoying. So an in- another interesting thing. So if you're out and about and you can go over to the west side, uh, Piscataqua River Park runs from the George Smith um, Athletic Fields on Precourt Street through the woods, across the bridge, and you can go, you can either end up at the ice arena or down where the lower soccer field is. Well, you can walk to all yep. the And then you can meet up with the bike path, right, right, and go that way. Um, interesting thing, just because you see it so much on Facebook, um... A friend of ours, Tyler, he lives down the street and he helped us with the, some of the cleanup. He comes walking out and he goes, okay, that was a bobcat. He saw a, a very large bobcat. He goes, at first he thought it was a dog. And he goes, that's really strange that that dog is just sitting in the path there. You know, like, why is there a dog right? out in the woods in the middle of the path? And he goes, and as he got a little closer, he had stood up and started moving away. And he goes, yeah, that doesn't have a tail. And that's definitely a cat. Wow. So, Oh, that's and, awesome. And then um, people who I know live up the hill on um, Tondro Court had moose in their yard the other day. <laughs> and there's been all sorts of reports of um, bear everywhere. So it is interesting. It is interesting how much people panic I... about the wildlife. I absolutely just love that the wildlife. I mean, we obviously displace something to, I think, have them. Um... No, I actually think it means that, that those... Um... I think it's because they're we cleaned the park. No. And <laughs> we said we, we mapped the trails, so that's why they're there now. Probably. <laughs> they're like, oh, finally, oh, I know where I am. Right, right. Oh, come, uh, Moose, um, we must go north. Um, so, it, it, uh, you know, it's a nice, I'd like, you know, we do complain about a lot because there's a lot to complain about. But it was a, it was a good thing. And I know on July 1st, and I don't have the website name, and I'm not going to remember all the details, but this summer, um, the Manchester Parks, in conjunction with the Manchester Transit, has a... They have bus trips to various parks. Um, some of the state some, parks. Some of the state I parks. And was... I know on July 1st they're doing, uh, is it Basquil Shaheen, Shaheen Basquil, whatever that is. They're doing uh, the Piscataqua River Park. And I believe they're doing the splash, one of the splash pads. But you can get on the bus for free. And, they can, and they're doing like two runs on, the July, on Saturday, July 1st. So we're going to set up a tent out there to help. Make sure people know what they're going to do. Oh, nice. What does the trailhead look like? Um, Like a regular trailhead, two legs. It's got a you know a little peaked roof. It's got the name of the park. It's got a locked glass okay. door um, with the map in it and everything. So it's oh, like a real yeah. state park type trailhead. For some reason, um, I was picturing like the, the Rimmon Heights. No, no. This is a, a pressure treated, you know, little nice. shingle. And, 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 you know, the kids... He did a fabulous job, and so, we really appreciated so it. So what do you think of this idea? Louie and I have been kicking around this idea. I'm back to how do we solve this mm. problem. I know we like to sit here, and we like to moan and yeah. complain and point fingers. Right. It's fun. It's and I, easy. And I know you talk about it. Like, I know you go home, and Dan and I do it, too. Like, we have legitimate conversations about, like, so what could 
change this. I don't claim well, to have the, all the answers, but we might have ideas. So, so why don't we like have a one page homeless contract? And it basically <laughs> says, um, <coughs> Like, you know, you agree to these things, right? Mm -hmm. Because someone has to actually buy into something in mm -hmm. order for change to happen. Yeah. If you just keep telling someone, they'll be yeah. like, uh, but they won't actually do yep. it, right? Like, you have to have some sense of ownership sure. over your stuff. And I think it should be like you, you do, uh, one, you have to, like, get clean, right? Right. If you get caught again and you're not clean, yep. so you have to consent to drug yep. testing. I think, like, point three has to be, and this has to be some, something that someone voluntarily signs. Yes. But it's like, we're going to put you in a uh, sleep coma, a drug-induced coma, to detox you. Mm. Because a lot of these people, like, opioid addiction is yep. not a it's joke. Like a, it's not a, it's not a 30-day recovery window at all it's like a year well, well yeah but but it's also because there's that physical addiction mm -hmm. aspect right like so it's interesting when i talk to people about um alcoholism or quitting drinking yep. or anything like a, a lot of people i talk to go to aa right mm -hmm. and i was like oh that wouldn't work for me right. because i was like oh i made a decision right i implemented it and i'm done like yep. i don't think about right. it i don't you know right but like AA is like every day you talk about how I don't drink. And well, I was maybe like, for some for people, some, that's right. what works. So, so my point is like different approaches yep. work yep. for different people for different reasons. But we do know from a physiological perspective mm -hmm. that people are addicted to it, which makes it really hard when you're trying to do the other work. Yep. So I almost feel like, you know, like a lot of the homeless people are like, oh, first they need a shelter or they need a place to stay. I'm like, but you're giving them a place to stay where they're shooting up. Right, and, and the shelter doesn't, apparently so... doesn't last, so then it's not... So, so I just feel like that's not that's a full not, solution. No. Or now that we've decided, okay, we're doing that, what can we sort of add on top of that to add on top of that? Like any project, whether it's self-improvement, yep. maybe you start with the basic. But then from there, you can't go, this is it. Right. So we You're on your actually own now. have to start... <laughs> Thinking about how do we, like, like, what's the next step to make these people own it? Yeah. Like, you are making well, like poor we saying, life decisions. The, like I was saying and before. it's my problem now. There needs to either be, or both, a carrot and a stick. And I don't feel like we have either. We don't hold anybody accountable. And we don't give anybody any real incentive to change. Now, I look at housing sometimes and okay, there's limited housing. I understand that. You know, I understand that you can't just say like, okay, Joe, you stop taking drugs and here's an apartment, you know, right? But what if it was, what if it was, um, you know, what if it was a bedroom in a halfway house? What if it's half a bedroom in a halfway house? What if it's a cubicle in an empty Shaw's store? Like whatever it is, but this is your space. And because you've agreed to detox, you now get this space of yours only. You're not just on a cot in the shelter that you don't know if it'll be available right, tomorrow. Like, uh, Give uh, them a step up and then... Oh my oh, God, we're going to gamify this. I mean, in some ways that is how it works, right? Like we understand that in terms of how social media is designed, right? Like, oh, you get the like, you get the right. dopamine hit. Like, so we do understand what motivates and incentivizes yeah. people now. And I'm like, well, then let's apply it to the people who clearly most need it in order to function but that's not the way people i i don't know and like i'm with you i like i don't understand but yet meanwhile you still see people handing money off to the people panhandling now i've got people down the street from my house oh, handing that's out actually food. what i was gonna say is back in san francisco in the day so this was 25 years ago plus uh, a, a good panhandler can make between 60 and 100 dollars yeah. tax-free yeah cash money because you know the one thing you always see people have money for is cigarettes and, and you booze. can't tell me if if you're i i, I struggle so. to not understand <laughs> in today's world i'll tell you i don't know if i said this last week we watched a documentary on arnold schwarzenegger it's a three-part series uh, yeah i I'm it, on it's very one. good yeah, because, because he, was, he worked his butt off yes. and he decided what he wanted to do and he's not a perfect man but he did not take crap from anything and his when he said i don't get up in the morning feeling sorry for myself or thinking that i'm a victim i just get up in the morning and know i gotta work hard to get to where i want to do and i don't have time to feel sorry for myself and i thought well, there you go. There's the difference. Yep. Now people, everybody's a victim. Everybody's disabled. It makes me nuts because disability, people who are truly disabled 
are now lumped in with all sorts of people that I'm sorry, you're not actually disabled. You might have a, a rougher time in life, but you're not disabled. But I don't understand if all these homeless people are, are, are struggling with addiction or mentally ill, why aren't they getting social security disability checks? Or are they getting social security disability checks? And are they getting uh, food stamps? And are they getting all these things and living for free in our shelters? I mean, these are the questions. Can somebody answer so, that? So, so actually, maybe we should come up with a list and submit it to the mayor and be like, hey, actually, here are things concrete that things. We talked about fi really finding out what it's costing. Yeah. I mean, when people realize, you know, there are a lot of elderly people in Manchester, yep. right, who live on fixed incomes. And when you start to go, well, I'm paying $7,000 in property yep. taxes um, so that I can eat cat food so right. that we can well, give $30,000 right. worth of services to the homeless guy who's pooping on my path yep. when I walk. Yep. Maybe well, and even it's even not more the right not way. even that not even <laughs> just the older person who's paying and not getting but you and I are paying and if I'm going we to We are the older people. No, but Debbie. I'm saying I'm not the person who's, you know, <laughs> deciding between cat food and it, right. right? But I'm saying but you and I are paying a wealth in taxes and if I'm going to be helping people, I want to be helping the people who actually deserve my help. If you're 80 years old and you're living on a fixed income and you can't, you know, maybe you're in a walker, maybe you have to walk. Why aren't we helping them? Right. The people who contributed and took care of themselves all through society. You know, they lived the life that they were supposed and, to. And again, you know, these things don't have to be trade-offs. But no. if we, like, circle it all back to something, at least that's a very much a core belief for me. Part of the problem when the state is so big, right? And and so we've broken these charities that used to be, say, the churches helping mm -hmm. people. You know, I watched at... at St. Mary's, where a homeless guy slept in front of the cathedral for the entire winter until I'm pretty sure he died of exposure. And that 20, and, 50 years ago would not have been the case. You know, and, and, and I was just like, hmm. Well, it's all changed. The churches stopped be being the caretakers when we implemented an income tax because now people, instead of giving their money to the church, were giving the money to the government. Right, right. So how is the church supposed to do the work if we've just given the money to the government? Right, so, so basically with my point, because we have to wrap up, is just that part of the dynamic between with with charity is actually the dynamic of I want to help you. I want to give. It mm -hmm. is actually something you choose to yep. do. Yep. And in return for that, you actually are, I mean, it sounds weird, but you are seeking the gratitude, yes. right? Like there's an energy exchange there that goes, I'm helping you and you should be grateful you, for the help because that is, that is actually the exchange. You're not entitled to my money to help to my, or to your charity or to anything no nope. so that whole victim entitlement energy is what we need to really reassess yep. and go back to and be like no princess sorry <laughs> that's not how it works that's not actually the energy dynamic and so if we can fix that so that people who want to help can help but people who receive the help also understand that you should be grateful yep. then i think we're going to start to get back to a healthier better balanced yep. society um while we're wrapping up i'm going to jump back to where we, where i started um so kevin kavanaugh i did see that joyce craig endorsed kevin kavanaugh for mayor so that's like the kiss of death so and because she says <laughs> she wants him to continue the good work that she's done and i thought oh uh, proof everything we're Seriously? talking about is um, her fault and not one person commented well on that they're like no. no so anyways um we will not be here next week um enjoy the weather if it's nice here if it's not i'm so sorry um we'll be back the following week with more exciting news i'm sure um that's all we got take care bye bye